Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday, August 29th. We're going to be focusing on Hurricane Adalia in this video, but just briefly mention that Hurricane Franklin is undergoing an eyewall replacement cycle and will be moving north of Bermuda where a tropical storm warning is in place. But thankfully, the track has not shifted any closer to the island, so we're not expecting hurricane conditions there right now. The tropical storm conditions are possible as the hurricane makes its closest approach in about 24 hours. There's also a new tropical depression out in the middle of the Atlantic, but it is not a threat to land, so we will not be discussing it today. Adalia, though, is a big threat to land, and that's the focus of this video. This is the zoomed-in infrared loop showing the core of the now hurricane Adalia moving and accelerating northward across the Gulf of Mexico, now spreading rain bands across the Florida Keys and into southwestern Florida. And we've talked over the last few days about the key milestone in Adalia's development being the formation of an inner core, that being a ring of thunderstorms around the center. We are seeing that develop today. We saw as it crossed the western tip of Cuba last night, that was the moment when thunderstorms started rotating around to the northern and northwestern side of the center, and an eyewall began to form. And we've had a fluctuating partial to nearly full eyewall ever since, as the hurricane has continued to intensify. We can see in the satellite picture that most of the black and white colors here indicating the strongest thunderstorms are pulsing mostly around the southern side of the center, and we have not yet closed off a full ring and cleared out the eye, so we're not seeing a big warm spot here in the center. It's still a cloud-filled eye, which tells you that the hurricane isn't yet fully mature, but unfortunately it does have some time to mature on its approach to landfall. This is the radar picture out of Key West. The hurricane barely shows up. This is the very upper levels of the eye that the radar beam from Key West is pointing at. And so you can kind of see the eye there. And you can see all the rain bands extending well east of the center, some of them now moving on shore. And we could see tropical storm force wind gusts in some of these bands. And with each successive band, as you get closer to the center, the stronger the winds become. These will be spreading northward and a little eastward during the day. This is the reconnaissance data from the NOAA aircraft currently flying in Adalia, probably about to leave here, uh, but you can see that the pressure is now down to 978 millibars and still falling with the strongest winds here in purple on the eastern side of the eye. We've seen maximum winds now up to 80 or 85 miles per hour estimated at the surface by the aircraft, and that is the NHC's advisory intensity at 11 a.m. Eastern time, 85 miles per hour maximum sustained winds. If we look at the animated water vapor satellite loop, we'll see that unfortunately Adalia's environment has improved since yesterday. We had some wind shear out of the north uh, tilting the vortex yesterday, but that has since abated, and we see upper level cirrus outflow expanding freely toward the north, indicating strong upper level diffluence out ahead of the hurricane. There's a little bit of a jet streak over the southeastern US, and that's typically a favorable sign for hurricanes moving northward in the Gulf. We have a trough digging into Texas and Louisiana, which is helping to usher Adalia northward along with this deepening ridge over the Bahamas and east of the Florida Peninsula, which is helping to push the hurricane up toward Florida. And at this point, it's unfortunately going to be off to the races for Adalia in terms of intensification expected all the way up until the time of landfall and exactly how much strengthening will depend on the details of the internal processes of the hurricane. That is, how quickly can its eye become fully closed, organized, and start clearing out. These are details that can be hard to predict with precision, but we know the environment is favorable, and so whether it's plus or minus 10 or 20 miles per hour on the max wind at landfall, we know it's going to be strong, and winds in excess of 100 miles per hour are the expectation. Again, we'll be watching for this eye to close off, and we'll see if we see some clearing on satellite imagery today, uh, but the trend is up, and this will be a major hurricane event for Florida. Now, I do want to talk about the track forecast a little bit. Actually, let me go back to the water vapor loop. You'll see that the hurricane is tracking very close to this 85 degree longitude line in gray here. This basically bisects Apalachicola in Florida, so the hurricane is about due south of there, right now. If you look at the recon data, these are the last three center position fixes from the aircraft. It's still moving north or slightly west of due north. This will be important to watch throughout the day. Hurricanes do wobble a lot and they wobble back and forth, so it's important not to take, say, this point and this point and extrapolate this line forward. That won't give you a good forecast. However, tracking the hurricane closely over the next 24 hours 
is going to uh, tell us more details about the potential landfall location. And there is still some wiggle room here, and there is some potential changes happening in some of the short-term uh, model guidance. This is the latest European model run showing the 500 millibar uh, mid-level steering flow or so in about 15 hours from its initialization. That would be at about 5 p.m. Eastern today. So a few hours after you're seeing this video, there is a Dahlia in the Eastern Gulf. And the main steering influence here is again, this little trough over the central Gulf, but really this ridge over the Bahamas. You can see that the, the wind flow is southerly and then it turns toward the east on the northern side of that ridge. One way to trace the ridge is looking at this black contour. This is the 588 decameter 500 millibar height line. Kind of shows you the edge of the ridge kind of over the Florida Peninsula and off of Georgia in a sense. And if you look at the last few runs of the ECMWF, you'll see that the line was just a little bit farther east and now it's bulging just a little bit more over North Florida, and we've seen a reduction in the wind speed over the northern Bahamas, indicating that the ridge is in fact building and amplifying a little bit more east of Florida than the model expected. This is important because the, the steering influence here is that a dial will be pushed more or less due, nor due north for a time, and then once it reaches the periphery of this ridge, it will turn toward the right. And where that turn occurs is very important because it could occur early and it could, could move towards Cedar Key, or it could occur late and it could move more into or just west of Appalachee Bay. And so there's still a little bit of a range of possible outcomes there. But this trend in the model toward a slightly st stronger ridge seems to increase the risks to Appalachee Bay a little bit more. Right now, the National Hurricane Center forecast track is into about Steinhatchee. I'm not going to claim that this line is exact, but it's about that area for the landfall location. But if this ridge continues to show up a little bit stronger on these model runs, perhaps this turn is delayed a little bit longer and maybe it moves up into Appalachee Bay or that area instead. So this is a risk for the Florida Panhandle counties that are currently going under warnings today. We can see even in the 250 millibar flow on the Euro that if you go back a couple of runs, this flow out ahead of the hurricane was a little bit lighter and on this most recent run a little bit stronger again evidence that this ridge is strengthening a little bit on some of these runs so as we look at this latest nhc advisory graphic from 11 a.m eastern time this is the forecast track of Adalia into the big bend area right over stein hatchie this is the track of the eye in these uh, black dots and i talk a lot about how impacts extend well away from the exact track of the eye and you can see that here colored warnings tropical storm in blue hurricane warnings in red all up and down the florida coastline and we have storm surge warnings all up and down the florida coastline important to realize though that of course the strongest winds the structural damage causing winds in the eye wall of the hurricane are, are right around the track of this eye and so that will matter in terms of the most extreme conditions you can see in the radar shot here the very worst damaging winds of the hurricane are going to be in this ring much much smaller than the overall expanse of very heavy weather so important to note that uh, the track will matter in the particular coastal county and even inland county that you happen to be in and where the hurricane wobbles and exactly where it makes landfall. Right now, the official track is into the Big Bend into Stein Hatchie area. We talked about how there might be a little bit of a risk for a left shift in the track. We could get a nudge as far west as somewhere like Taylor County, perhaps even Wakola or Franklin County could still see a landfall and a direct hit. And then you're talking about inland areas like Leon County and Tallahassee getting a much stronger inland wind threat. We actually just had a hurricane warning go out for Leon County. And everyone else in inland northern Florida should be aware that the hurricane will carry hurricane force wind gusts inland a certain distance with it. So there is a risk for not only coastline heavy wind, but also inland for a good bit and power outages will be widespread. And again, hurricanes tend to wobble. It's what they do. So although we talk about the, the risk for a shift left, there could also be a shift back toward the right. You just don't really know for sure. So it's important to prepare for the worst and obviously hope for the best. Just assume that the eye of the hurricane could deviate a little to the left and hit you or deviate a little to the right and hit you. It could happen. So prepare as if it will. And there is limited time remaining in northern Florida to prepare.
This is the peak surge forecast from the NHC showing the highest values of 10 to 15 feet in the Big Bend area of Florida. This is a major surge event, this concave area of coastline where water will get funneled up. We're going to see flooding along a whole section of coastline. If you're in an evacuation zone, you should leave if you can as uh, areas will go underwater. We'll see that even down in Tampa Bay, especially if the center is a little farther to the right, closer to Cedar Key. The farther down the coastline it goes, the worse the surge in the central coast of western Florida. But we're expecting water level rises regardless of the exact track all along the coastline where flooding could occur. And then again, storm surge possible as far west as Apalachicola. And then again on the southeastern U.S. Uh, seaboard on this other section of concave-shaped coastline where southeasterlies to the east of the hurricane will be pushing water toward the coastline. It will be made worse if the Dahlia Center moves close to this coastline on its way northeastward. The surge might be a little lessened if the hurricane is a little farther inland on its way northeast, but we'll have to see again with the exact track. Some coastal flooding certainly possible in those areas. This is the swath of most likely arrival time for dangerous winds, tropical storm force winds, 40 miles per hour or stronger, starting this evening along southwestern Florida. We're already seeing rain bands encroaching on the peninsula. And then overnight tonight, and then going into tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, that's when we're talking about landfall. And again, uh, we'll see where the exact landfall point is, but you can see regardless, a large area could see winds strong enough to cause power outages and damage and so please prepare accordingly. This is the flash flooding risk map again, showing a swath of moderate flash flooding risk as the hurricane, like all hurricanes, will bring heavy rain with it. It will be moving fairly briskly, but that doesn't stop it from dropping a lot of water on the ground. And some of these areas are certainly flash flood prone, and this could extend well beyond Florida, deep into Georgia and the Carolinas as the hurricane weakens, but continues to dump plenty of water as it heads northeastward. That's about it for this video update on Adalia. I may have another update tomorrow, but the hurricane may already be on shore. A lot of the forecasting for this hurricane is already done. We've tried to prepare you for the idea that this is going to strengthen on its way in and will bring major impacts to Florida. This will be a significant hurricane event. Hopefully you have prepared. You still have some time. If you haven't, please take advantage of it as Adalia approaches and stay safe, everyone. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.